What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Mutt Tips. I am your host, Sean Taylor from the Made Up Theater, and let's jump into today's topic, improvising on your own solo scenes. In a continuing effort to help people improvise on their own right now, I'm gonna do kind of a sequel to my episode 43, which was all about improvising on your own. But now we're gonna work on solo scenes, which is difficult. It's a very strange experience to actually improvise as more than one character. And a lot of uh, really talented improvisers have done it and they're amazing when they're done well. And one thing that we have to really focus on is just the whole aspect of listening, not to our partner now because we don't have a scene partner, it's just us. We need to listen to our own choices, our own offers, respect our own choices and respect our own offers. So let's get into a few things before we get started with some exercises. One thing I really wanna emphasize before we jump into solo scene work is to actually watch it. Watch some solo shows, okay? If you're looking for an improv performance, go check out Paul Valencourt. He does a show that's called Man Vs. Movie. Um, there are some clips of it, of a, I think full performances on his YouTube page. I'll put that in the description down below. But it's really cool to watch one person improvise a full movie without the benefit of having an ensemble support him. And the thing that we need to like be okay doing is, you know, again, this is improvised, so we're gonna make mistakes, you know? And generally we have the benefit of, oh, our scene partners will help incorporate our stumble into the dance and make us look good, but we have to do that ourselves. We have to make ourselves look good. So trust every choice that comes out of your mouth because it is gonna carry through and inform the narrative or inform the scene that you are doing. And I also wanna really strongly recommend uh, watching theatrical productions of one-person shows, you know? Um, I know this is improv comedy, but I don't wanna emphasize comedy. I wanna improvise theater, improvisational theater. I want us to focus on that right now. Putting the burden of comedy on your shoulders is something I don't wanna emphasize. Let's go for the theatrical aspects and like really honor our scene as though it came out of a script. So there's a lot of like one person productions, a lot on Broadway, like Whoopi Goldberg or John Leguizamo. I really wanna recommend uh, the newest one that was just released a few days ago on Amazon Video by Phoebe Waller-Bridge. She's the creator uh, and actress in Fleabag, which is an amazing Amazon series, but she also released her theatrical solo show that inspired the TV show. So it's called Fleabag. And it's only five bucks, but hey, hey, it's a donation, okay? Because it goes to help COVID-19 relief funds. And it's so amazing watching her. She's she's just such a brilliant actress. Her facial expression, she does scene work with herself as another character and herself. And just like simple shifts, like, you know, just turning to the right or turning to the left and changing her face and showing emotions, especially in her eyes, okay? Um, so go watch maybe a theatrical performance, either improvised or theatrical. I really recommend it before we jump in today. So the first exercise we're gonna try out is a solo scene, but we're gonna do it with our eyes closed, okay? And I'll demonstrate in just a moment. And the benefit of closing your eyes during scene work, not just with yourself, but even if you do scenes with other people, is we'd stop getting distracted so much by other things, like the activity or the environment, you know? Whenever you see a scene about basketball, what causes that scene to suck is when it's just focused on the activity of like, oh, we're playing basketball. Oh, I just got a three point. Yeah, I'm winning. And it's not so much about like the relationship and the emotional evolution of the characters during this game of basketball. We use the environment and activity as a way to channel the relationship and as a way, it's like a filter over your eyes. It helps enhance the scene and helps showcase how our characters feel about ourselves and each other. So what's gonna happen is, I want you to play two characters in this, again, with your eyes closed. The first character, play close to yourself, okay? Don't worry about doing a, like a really crazy character, just be you, okay? Think of yourself as like a straight-laced character. Play 90% close to yourself, which means the other 10% you know, could make some weird choices. Like you might actually rob a bank as yourself with that extra 10% that's different from you. Uh, um, and the other character is gonna just be, you know, a slight change. Make it very distinct. These are two distinct characters. So change your voice. It can maybe be higher or lower or raspier or younger or maybe a different gender or something like that, okay? You know, do a little accent. It's up to you. Don't make it like super crazy like this. Hey, what are you doing? You know, it's kind of like goofy, okay? We want this to be a really strong grounded scene. So how to work is I'll get a suggestion, close my eyes, and the first thing I'm gonna do is say a name back and forth, okay? And the name is gonna help us get into these characters, okay? It's gonna help establish these two distinct characters, but because when I say Carl, 
When I say Carl, I know which character I am because I'm addressing the other person, Carl. And I'm mostly like associating my character with a name that I'm calling someone else, which is gonna be helpful, okay? And after I say the name back and forth a few times, and also like shift your body, shift your body a little bit, cause that'll help. Like the way you're positioning yourself is gonna help you get into the character more as well. After I've said the name a few times back and forth, I'm gonna jump into a scene, okay? Just like a short scene, and I just want it to be focused on the relationship, react to the line that was just said, okay? Always do that. Let's try it out. All right, to get started, I'm gonna bring out my handy dandy app, Sakyo. Again, my recommendation for improvising and getting suggestions. Um, cool, there's a little relationship tab. I'm gonna click that a few times, and that's my relationship, okay? My relationship is mortal enemies, okay? So, uh, I'm gonna start this scene using mortal enemies as my inspiration with my eyes closed. Let's see how I do. Theodore. Dennis. Oh, Theodore, Theodore. Dennis, Dennis. Theodore, you know I'm gonna get the promotion, okay? I would make a much better shift supervisor than you. Really, Dennis, I, you know what? I agree, I agree, you're so much better than me. You know, those lattes always at 155 degrees Fahrenheit. You're so good. You're so good, Dennis. Are you condescending to me? Hmm? Theodore, are you doing that right now, huh? You know what, Mr. Wilson, he recognizes my success in this branch. Oh, really? Yeah? Yeah? Well, go ahead. Lead us to victory, Captain. Captain Dennis. All right, so that was my scene. So a few quick things is make sure that name, you gotta emphasize the heck out of that name, okay? Keep using it. If you want, you can go back and forth and just say that name for like, I don't know, 10 times, as many times as you want and feel comfortable. And then when you keep using dialogue, try to start each sentence with that name or end the sentence with that name, okay? Because it, again, it's gonna solidify that relationship and it's gonna solidify your character, okay? And another thing, use posture as well. Like when I was being uh, Dennis, I was like this, you know? And when I was being Theodore, I was being like this, you know? Getting into that body position helped me like get into the mindset of that character and helped me make choices. So try that out. It's gonna be really effective to helping you listen, obviously not to other choices, but your own. All right, now you try it out. I'm gonna bring out my app and give you a suggestion or you can get your own suggestion, it's up to you. That's your suggestion, okay, of a relationship, convict, and police. Try it out, what you got? All right, now you try it out. I'm gonna bring out my app and give you a suggestion, or you can get your own suggestion, it's up to you. That's your suggestion, okay, of a relationship, convict, and police. Try it out, what you got? The next exercise I'm gonna do is I'll do a solo scene by myself, but I'm going to not use dialogue, okay? Less emphasis on speech, more emphasis on telling the relationship tale between the two characters that I will play using proximity, using facial expressions, using body posture, using the environment. I'm gonna use these things as a way to tell the tale. I'm not gonna act like I'm talking and like moving my mouth as a way to like show like, oh, this is like a silent film. It's a silent scene, which is much different from a silent film. There's no dialogue. We are telling our story without speech. Let's see how I do. All right, I'm gonna bring out my handy dandy app and hit the location tab since I'm gonna use the environment as a way to inform my story. And that's gonna be my suggestion. My suggestion is beach, okay? So, let's see how I do.
right, so that was my scene. So a few quick takeaways that I wanna emphasize, and the big one I wanna emphasize is eye contact, which is really strange, right? Giving eye contact to someone who's not actually there. But, you know, improv comedy, it doesn't work without eye contact. I think that's one of the most crucial things to help stimulate your scene. Checking in with each other, you know, taking visual cues from the way your partner feels to affect how you respond. And if I'm doing a scene, you know, by myself, obviously, and maybe I'm a character over here who's just like washing dishes, and then I'm like, I look over at my scene partner that I'm about to create, and then I start to move over here and become that second person. And I'm just like, you know, sitting in a chair, just like watching TV, being lazy. And then as this character, I look over, I like, I get to now have that vision. When I become the character one, I have that imprinted vision in my mind that this character was just like looking up. So when I come over here and I'm washing dishes, I see that lazy person just looking up at me and it makes me angrier to the point where like maybe I go like this and just like smash my dish down really hard as I'm washing it. And then I come back over to this character and I go, ooh, you know, react to it, okay? And it's all through eye contact, which is so strange. It's so weird, but it's very effective. We need to visualize each other's characters, okay? Because that's all we got. We only have our choices and ourselves on stage. So try it out. Another thing to emphasize is gonna be the transfer of focus, which is used through movement, okay? So like, if I'm character one over here, I'm gonna become character two through a movement across the stage. Now, when you're doing this movement, it's gonna be a little strange at first. Obviously, there involves a shift of the body and maybe a walking across the stage. Maybe a few feet, maybe all the way across to the other side of the stage or the room that you're performing in. I don't know, it's dependent upon how you establish the environment. But as we're doing it, try to just make it super neutral, okay? Imagine you're editing a scene, you know? The edit in a long form is when you walk across stage, don't give eye contact to anybody performing, very neutral and that concludes the scene and is about to initiate your next scene, okay? So make it very like neutral, try to make it quick, like don't run necessarily, but just a nice little quick jaunt to the other character and boom, get into the stage position that maybe you left it in or jump into just the reaction position based on the choice that just came before you, okay? It's tricky, I know, but we gotta get good at it, right? If you get good performing on your own, Boy, howdy, it's gonna really transfer to when you start performing with other people again, right? And it's your turn, so let me get you a suggestion or you can grab your own. Let's get a location this time. That's your suggestion. Alien ship, ooh, fun. Let's see how you do. And the last exercise is about just putting it all together. You're gonna do a solo scene with two characters, but this time you're gonna use dialogue as well as staging. You're gonna use movement on stage as well as everything that we've just talked about, putting it all together to make a nice improvised scene. A few quick things, focus on that eye contact. I know it's weird, but practice it. Practice it in a mirror if you want before you start, just to really see how you're giving your emotions through your eye contact and your facial expressions. Also, use those names, repetition. If you want, you could just say a name back and forth to get into the characters. And also, repetition. You just repeat a line back to your partner, okay? So like, if I'm a character and I say, I love you, you know, I can respond as the other character by saying, you love me? I could say it a few times. You love me? You love me. As a way to get into the character and truly honor and react to the choice that was just made, okay? It's really gonna be helpful. Use the environment too, but also don't neglect your partner. The scene is not about the environment, it's about you two, which again, is just you. All right, I'm gonna bring out my handy dandy app again and I'll give myself a location as well. I love locations. It helps me jump into the scene a little quicker. That's my suggestion. Park is my suggestion. Let's see how I do. Hey, Charlie. Enjoying your Saturday afternoon? Oh. Hey, Cynthia. Yeah, yeah. You know, just getting my, getting my steps in. I like to ride like this. I'm a rebel. <laughs> rebel! Oh really, how high can you get with that method? Probably not very good, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, of course I can. Just like, watch this. You, you, uh, careful stud. You know, I bet I could go a little higher if I had a little help. You ready for the task, Charlie? Uh, yeah, sure, Cynthia. 
Um, just give you a little light tap, just like that. <laughs> feel the breeze, feel the breeze. Oh, come on, you can hit a little bit harder than that. Well, I don't want to hit, I want to just push, you know. I want to be delicate, you know. I don't want to appear to, no, push me as hard as you can. Push, push, yeah. Awesome, that was my scene. Let's see how you do now, okay? And for this, remember, it's all a process. It's gonna take time. Don't expect a perfect scene the first time you do it. It might take a hundred or more, who knows? Take your time with it. Set simple goals if you want. You can just do a scene saying names back and forth as you use the stage, okay? Always feel free to modify. Make it easier on yourself because accomplishing something is gonna fuel you towards the more challenging accomplishments that will take place as you get more into doing solo scenes and improv in general. Try it out. And now it's your turn. Again, let me get you a suggestion of a location and that is how it's gonna be, baby. You got River. Good luck. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes this episode of Mutt Tips. Thank you so much for checking it out. If you enjoyed the video, like it down below or comment with somebody you like addressed in a future video, especially maybe some advice or tips you'd like in terms of improvising on yourself. Or even with others as well, because we can still improvise with others using the power of the internet, okay? Also, subscribe on YouTube to be informed of upcoming videos. We're also doing live streaming shows. Go to madeuptheater.com, click on the online shows for more information about that. We got one coming up this Saturday. Thank you so much, everybody. I'll see you next time for another episode of Mutt Tips. Bye.